only got here. Oh, well, we are? Yeah, pretty sure. Oh, here you are. <laughs> here we are. Yes, we All are. What's new? We are. <laughs> Welcome to What's New. Tonight we have two lovely ladies with us and our sorry to say that our musicians were got sick so we don't have them tonight but we will have them later on yeah. but right now we'll let Aris take over the program and this is Jean Henson and I'm Marianne Roth and she will introduce our guest. Okay so we have with us tonight about the spooky Halloween oh, well it's, it's so not spooky, spooky. Yeah. it <laughs> is educational actually there yes. Yeah. Fun education in the cemetery. In the cemetery. So if you guys want to go on and tell about it, we have Mickey Ketting and uh, Ellie, Ellie, Ellie Douglas. Douglas. And Sandra Cabot's going to be here, but she's going to be a little bit late. Okay. So you can talk, talk, talk. Well, she can, right. We can talk to our hearts. Talk can too. Talk. Exactly. Well, right. you can talk all you want nothing, to anyway. Nothing like yeah. talking about the spirits in the cemetery. And, yeah. and uh, there are a lot of people buried in that cemetery, and if you pass it and you look in there and you think, there can't be that many people in there because there's not very many tombstones. But there are only 300 tombstones, but they believe there are three to 5,000 people that are buried in that cemetery. Wow. All those hills up there? Yeah. There's people buried all up in there where there's no tombstones. Right. right. Back back in the back in the swale and everything. All the way up to Fifth Street. There's yeah. Well, that's all. all that's all burials back in there. And uh, the they the first early burials and and the poor burials, if you will, they buried with wooden crosses. Right. In twenty years wooden crosses are deteriorated and are gone. And even, then even the iron ones. Iron the ones, iron it took still, about 75 years for an iron cross too. to deteriorate, and there is one upright to an iron cross that is left standing, but there's no complete iron cross left. But we do have the 300 stones that are left standing, and we have some stones that are peeking out through the grass that you know that there is still a stone underneath there and that's one of these days you know how you always have those things that one of these days one of these days we're going to be able to go in there with some iron poles and and probe down there and find some of those stones that have just dipped below the surface and will they dig those up then and yeah yeah if we can do and that's that part of the restoration exactly exactly the uh, the stones that are completely missing we have a few that have been pledged back to us because years ago when they mowed if a stone had fallen over they would take it and throw it on a pile and then people in town would go in and take them and use them as stepping stones in their gardens oh my gosh there's and supposed to be there, a lot there's of some those still around, around. there, there are a lot of those still, still around. around i've seen yeah. them and well people don't realize it because they turn down. turn them upside yeah. down and um, so it's not that people are keeping them, they just don't know that they have them. And, um, and those sink in the ground. Stones sink pretty fast. Those sink very we fast. Because they down probably 15 years ago. And they you can barely see, see one of them. Right. Of them are all under right. uh, from and washing. Uh, have you had someone come in with some of that... Uh, Divining? No. Ground penetrating radar? Yes. Yes, we have. In there. I know there's a cemetery close to where I used to live, and it just figured it was an old cemetery, old church, and they started to dig one time, and dug and dug up a body. So they brought in that ground, ground and there's a whole section there of uh, Union soldiers yeah. buried in there. And they, uh, so they well, that's, it all. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're pretty sure that the fence that we have does not actually include all of the cemetery. That, that there are probably some bodies or parts of bodies that are outside of the fence line. Oh, really? But we don't know that for sure. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we just suspect that. Um, now, that street. <coughs> Sixth Street. It's never going to go through there. No. No. Garages uh -huh. back there. Yeah. Yeah. So Sixth so, Sixth Street will never reopen. So there could be some under portion of that. That could be, and if you notice on Market Street, 
the fence kind of does a little mm -hmm. jig and then the sidewalk goes that way. There could be some there. There could be some on the Fifth Street side that are under the street level and we just don't know it. But when we did have the ground penetrating radar come in, um, there were some things we wanted to find. We were looking for the, the mass burial of the Dr. Franklin II, mm -hmm. the people that had died in that disaster. And uh, I had gotten three very accurate, absolutely positive locations of where it was. Oh, really? Three different places that people assured me no uncertainty that that's where that was at. And of course they were all three wrong when we got the ground penetrating radar to find it. Uh, we wanted to know before we laid the pathway that goes from the gate into uh, the, where the little plaza is in front of the crucifix, uh, we wanted to make sure that that had no bodies buried underneath that pathway, which was already there, you know, but before we paved we didn't pave it, but we put some, some and stones. Well, yeah. we had stones at the at the beginning, and then it was a kind of a chat going through the rest of it, and um, and there were no bodies buried there, so we felt good that we could lay that down, mm -hmm. uh, and we were um, oh, we wanted to know where there. We thought the Native Americans were buried down in the swale, and so we wanted to know if that was accurate. And we did find what we thought were Native Americans that were buried down there. Now, is that in the dip part? And, yeah, yeah. That's in that, that dip, sweet. that big dip part. So now, were those mass buried? Also? No, no, no. Those, those are individual berries. Those were all uh, Native Americans that had been baptized and were buried in there. Yeah, I was going to say they, that's unusual. I usually put them up on. Not necessarily, okay. uh, and I, what we had heard was that Native Americans buried with their toes pointing due east, and so if we could find any graves uh, like that, that that would kind of assure us. Well, a few years later, we had a Native American chief and his medicine man who came through, and they wanted to bless the graves of the Native Americans, and so I told them, well, we were looking for these graves that had the toes pointing to east. He said, well, some tribes did that, but others did not. And the same thing, some of them buried up on, on above ground and some did not. So, so it varied from tribe to tribe. And he said, but we'll know when we pass over the grave of a Native American. And so he went through, he and the medicine man went through, and there was a big crowd of people there to watch it. And then they would stop, and he would find me in the crowd, and he would go. So it yeah, pretty yeah, much was, was very close to oh. where we thought we, they had the burials. So, oh my word, that's, so, that's amazing. So that is a kind of... I, I gave them one. I know. Oh, yeah, for Charlie to... Uh, Usually they down. focus in on Yeah, that. we don't have that. Charlie's not but there. if it's held up, they yeah. can see it. Okay. I mean, you know, if somebody holds it up, okay. he can zoom in on it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, people out there. We yeah. had to get a little situation straight little, down here. Little book. So I think that cemeteries are so interesting. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. There, There is so much history just right there in that little one one and a half block area that it's it's just fascinating you could spend a lot of time there so every year you find more information about other people mm -hmm. who are buried in there yeah and you just keep expanding yeah more people come after seeing the uh, seeing the spirit reunion then they come back and they say could could i do it next year <laughs> could i could i be in it could i participate and and so we we keep growing. We have had no negative comments ever I, yet. I was able one That's year. I, I was able to get over and, and see it, and I really enjoyed it. And that was one year. Al Kaiser was there too. And, yeah, and he, it he'll just, be there this year too. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. he's. I think he's been at every one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's mm -hmm. best in there. Oh, he enjoys it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So he'll be, he'll be there and and uh, 
hopefully it looks we like have another spirit here too yeah, yeah. yeah. yes do. i've been uh portraying uh one of the spirits uh, from actually from prairie de rocher she was born in prairie de rocher and lived here in saint genevieve so i've done that for the last three years i guess yeah oh how neat yeah the and first year i was really nervous but <laughs> yeah, but see, you, got, you made it through and you yeah. did a fine job. And nobody knows if you screw up anyway. Right. <laughs> You're just telling your story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that year was the year that I, I got to play your sister. Oh. I think that was right. your first Ursula, year. Right. I was Ursula. Ursula and she was. Oh, so it's there were sisters buried there? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Well, everybody in there, you know, it's just is insane. <laughs> yeah, Saint Genevieve today, everybody's related, and and uh, so these Barbeau sisters had uh, married in in Prairie de Rocher, but they lived out their lives here in Saint Genevieve, and and so so they therefore they were buried here in Saint Genevieve, and uh, and so raised their families here and. Have many many descendants here. So, so, how many people do you do now? Right now, for this year, <coughs> we've got 26 oh that are going to oh. going to be here, and uh, so so that'll that's going to be exciting, and uh, and that's about what we run. Sometimes yeah. a little smaller, maybe, but we somewhere between 19 and 25 is what we usually have. But I we have new outfit. people. Thank you. You represent somebody at the uh, Desjardins too. Yes, I, I, my persona is Odile Valet, Felix Valet's wife. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I thought for there a while we were confused. I thought her persona was my mother-in-law, but she's not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There were five five sisters, and three of them had a first name Marie. Oh so, so it was a little it was, confusing. It was confusing. I thought you were Marie Jean, and she's I'm not Marie. Marie Ray. Ray. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So and there's another women, Marie too. Yeah. yeah. So that, very confusing. That, what was the mother thinking? She's, of? I don't know right. what she was thinking. Yeah. Of. Well, she was naming them all after. Yeah. The well, that's true, but so. still, how confusing. At least, at least it wasn't a modern age where they were well, getting mail and yeah. phone calls. Well, uh, <laughs> probably too, um, I guess that many years ago, you would have had to have a saint's name to be baptized. Oh, yeah. yes. And yes. so yes. Mary Absolutely. was a very common one. Yes. That's yeah. even my name. Yeah. I'm a Mary too. Well, mm -hmm. um, even <laughs> Mary Elise uh, Sampson, uh, has relatives buried in the cemetery, and I'm sure that a lot of other people have uh, ancestors that are buried there too, which makes it even more interesting. I think. Mm -hmm. so. We had Bernie Schramm came out one year and talked about Jean Baptiste Valet because he had lived in Jean Baptiste's mm -hmm. home, and so that was interesting having somebody that had lived in their actual home mm -hmm. and uh, and getting people that knew so much history to to bring along with them is always exciting mm -hmm. and uh, so and we have been blessed with the people that that do come out and portray the spirits and, well, and it's wonderful. yeah it's it mm -hmm. it was it was an idea and it just has grabbed hold and has gone and the first five or six years, we would get groups and we'd say, well, where are you from? And they were from all over the place. And they were from the cemetery committee from whatever oh community goodness. that they were from, <clears throat> that word had gotten around and so they wanted to see it so they could go back and do something like it in their cemetery. And, uh, and in those years, I was president of the foundation and I would get phone calls saying, uh, I'm on the cemetery committee in my community. Could you tell me about this spirit reunion or what you're doing in the cemetery and how you're doing the restoration and, and you know, try to explain things uh, to people over the phone that are looking for information when a lot of times it was information, ground penetrating radar. I know a lot more about it now than I did when they, when they first came with it because 
I didn't know very much about it then, but I do now. And I've pushed the little little cart around oh, in the in the cemetery. Does that pick up? Is that images? Does that make a noise or, or something? It, or it, it, if you look at it, if you watch TV and they and the cops go and get the ground penetrating radar looking for the dead body, and you see the body that's laying there with its arms oh, you crossed. Can see the bones that's not up. what you see. No, <laughs> that's not at all. Because you look and you think, wow. But when you look, because I had been out there, and it looks like a large size um, lawnmower. Yeah. And you yeah. push it slowly along, and what it looks like is a plate of spaghetti. All these lines and things of this nature. They take all of that information that is being gathered, disturbed uh, dirt that has gone disturbed in layers, how far down it's been dis disturbed, <coughs> any solid structures in there as a coffin or you know anything's in between metal objects, things like that. And they then they have to take it back to a computer that then analyzes all of that data and then can tell that, yes, this here is probably something that is goes down six or eight feet. Uh, there is something that is so long and gives you more information. And then you have to eventually interpret it to mean that that probably means it is a coffin with a body in it, or it's down there and there's a box and there's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. And so it was very interesting to learn all of that. So the wood boxes would be disintegrated. Some of those were, were completely disintegrated, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you, um, I know you wouldn't desecrate it, but have you had the opportunity to dig any no. of this up? No. No. We've, we've not broken the surface of, of the earth. Knowing that, that we are in a cemetery, we're not going to do anything that might disturb anybody's grave. Mm -hmm. We're we're not going to dig down and. Were there a lot of on top of the ground boxes no, here? No. 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 We we always said for years we would say that there is nobody that is buried above ground in those box graves. We said that. But for, they're not anyway, are they? Didn't they really bury them in the ground? And they build did. That over the top they did them? because we we like I said we always said that was the truth. But when we had the stonemasons here, uh, I said now if you open one of those box graves because all of them needed some repair work done. I said if you if there is a body inside there, I'm the first call that you make before you call anybody else, and uh, and they didn't find any, oh. and so we we were glad to know that we had been telling the truth all along that in fact everyone is buried below the ground mm -hmm. and there is nobody sitting in any of those box graves. Yeah, there would have been too much stench. Oh, yeah. We would have put them in there. Yeah. But now they were I know there were gobs of them down in Perryville. There used to be lots of them on top of the ground, but now those are all Oh gone. yeah, after a length of yeah. time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there might be one or two in the old part, but not, not like there used to be. There used to be a lot of them. Yeah. Well, nobody has been buried in there since 1894. That would have been her spirit is the last one mm -hmm. to be buried. 1894. In. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cemetery closed in 1882. But there was one lady that had a spot. Did you, I can't think. I heard about her. Her husband was buried there. That's her. That was me. Yeah. And what was the name again? Odile Valet. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she, her, because yeah, uh, her husband was buried there and they'd closed the cemetery, she wanted to be buried next to her husband. So she made the city an offer that they could not refuse. She offered them the new cemetery, the land for the new cemetery, yes. if she could be buried there, and they agreed. So yes, she was the best, last burial in the cemetery. In the so she is buried up there? Yes. Yeah. yes. The, mm -hmm. the big, large pink cross yeah, the, the, on the, Fifth Street? The, the, uh, it's a pink granite. granite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ro uh -huh. Rose granite. Mm -hmm. That's so. interesting. Yeah, I, that's 
the story I'd heard. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Was so mm -hmm. Just interesting. You know, with me and Old Duke in the archives, I get, I'm into all of this anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, she's not actually the last burial. Mm -hmm. She's the last Perfect. death and, and burial, burial, but not the actual last burial. Explain. You'll have to come on Saturday night to find mm -hmm. out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> chopped up in pieces. One of these always, days I'm going to make it. This, this yeah. weekend is the show at the Dubert. Oh, so, oh, that's right. I did. Yeah, I yeah. I read about that. Yeah, that that was. I wish they and had we tried to check and make sure nothing was going on, and we missed that. Well, we're always part at the end of rural heritage days, mm -hmm. is the spirit reunion, mm -hmm. and uh, we said, well, it's at night, so the heritage days is okay. I'm not thinking about that. Yeah. So I think one of the things that I hope that no one misses is that in, in 2007 we received the Missouri Humanities yes. Uh, yes. Governor's Cup or Bowl. bowl we yeah, received so. a beautiful crystal bowl for for that. For the Spirit Union. Mm -hmm. Went up to, uh, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Jefferson it was. City. It, yeah. we, it was a, a real surprise. Yeah. And that was in 2007 and so that was only about two or three years after we had had started okay. so, mm -hmm. so we went to one in uh, Williamsburg but it, everybody says this one is so much better I think the people we didn't there. really enjoy that one at all well because we didn't know anybody yeah I mean, it wasn't yeah. our it wasn't our history that's yeah. well that's this is yeah this is that would make a difference local history and mm -hmm. and Maybe you're related to some of the spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have at least heard the stories about about these people, and and um, and maybe you'll find out that you want to be a spirit next year also. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might be chilly, so please, yes. everybody, dress warmly. <laughs> Other years we've worried about the heat more yeah. than anything. We froze last year, though. We were really chilly. Last year was cold. The year before that, though, it was that's warm. when, yeah, that's when we decided we would make hot chocolate and sell hot chocolate, and it was close to eighty. Yeah, it, the mosquitoes almost mosquitoes, carried oh, us away. Yeah, yeah. So. So maybe with the cool air, they'll be gone. They'll, they'll be gone. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was just really cold last year. I know we were off just. Yeah, it's not supposed to be quite that It's cold supposed to be in the 40s, I think. They yeah. Saw. That's yeah. what I saw, but I'm hoping it's, better it's than just... better than 30s. Better than 30s, yes. 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 Yeah. That. yeah. It might get low later, but you're not going to be there at 2 or 3 o'clock anymore. No, no. <laughs> no. no. Okay, so now that we've discussed the cemetery, you want to go with your information? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just a list she brought me of... of uh, who all is in this in this cemetery this time, and the characters that they're playing? So, just for my information. Oh, okay. And so I think we've given you all. It starts at five o'clock. We open the doors. The price is ten dollars for adults, five dollars for students. Under five, they're free. Uh, we close at eight o'clock, and uh, by that time, it is pretty dark in the and cemetery and uh, we don't want anybody in there maybe falling or what have you so we try to get everybody out before it gets too dark. Now do you use lan lanterns? Everybody has we've, a lantern. We've got lanterns. lanterns. The spirits have flashlights. lanterns and then we have little flashlights that we give out to the oh, okay. groups of people going through. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want your own flashlight for security you want your own that you like the better than what we could give you, feel free to bring your own flashlight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and but there will be lanterns, and there'll be lanterns along the pathways, and uh, to help you see up and down the hills and and everything. So, okay, I have a Mrs. question. Has have you ever had an incident? And you know what I mean. Yes. I know what you mean. No, we haven't. We haven't. I guess they're pretty happy with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And well, it's not a scary event. I mean, no, we no, I wouldn't mean so yeah. much scary because I'm I'm not afraid of something like that. Uh -huh. No, 
when you had something on Facebook, would you spend the night in the cemetery? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, it, Especially it's, this one. Yeah. It's the little kids that sometimes they're not quite sure if you really are a spirit right. or if you really are. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I bet they do get confused. Yeah, I had one little boy that he, you know, he said, he, you know, he, he, he kept looking at me, with, you know, and I kept thinking, well, what's he, he's going to ask me something, I know. And he said, are you really a spirit? And I, so I had to tell him, I said, no. Because I know he was really, he was really worried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, we're not out to scare anyone. We're not out no, to, no. to. Do I do that? You go up to the park. Yes. There you go. Yes, the haunted yeah. house, right. Yeah, yeah. To the haunted house. Yeah. So, so not, not, not for us. We're, we're going to, we hope entertain you. We hope give you a little bit of history. And, uh, and you dress the part, right? And, and yes. we all, all yeah, dressed. All dressed in, in costume. My daughter-in-law has been wanting to come from Illinois for this thing for I don't know how many years, and she always works on Saturday. Oh, no. And she's hoping that one Saturday it'll hit that she can get off. So I'm going to call her and tell her. Call her and tell her. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Call in sick on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, but she said, I'm going to get there one of these days. I yeah. find it so fascinating. She wants to be a part of it. So yeah. Bad. So I keep telling them the dates and everything. Okay. Just hoping we hit it right. Well, it's the fourth Saturday, so if she wants to be a part of it, plan it for next year, and she can be a spirit. Oh, yeah. So it's always the fourth. Fourth Saturday. It, it's always when uh, World, World Heritage, Heritage Day. It's always so the fourth. It's weekend. always the fourth Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of October. Mm -hmm. Heritage Day is always the fourth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She can plan ahead of time. She can't make it. She's been wanting to come for so long. She talks about it all the time. Well, good. Just tell her to get, this is the time. This is the time. <laughs> and pick out a spirit to be for next year. Do you have a list of people with histories? I, I have a binder of all of the the burial or all of the people that had died in the time that it was open, and uh, uh, that are buried there. Uh, Lucille Bosler had had. Put that list together, mm -hmm. so so you, we could look through that and find. And then when you find one, then you research do it some regions. But or most it. of the time, for most of the uh, the bodies that we know who's buried there, we just don't know where they are. Yeah, a lot of them we don't know where they are. Yeah, three hundred stones, three to five thousand bodies. So. so right. Uh, so, so there are a lot of the regular graves that have lost their markers. Yes. Right, right. And nobody in in a modern cemetery, they would have have neat rows, and you go to the to the office, and they would give you a map, and they would say, you know, go to this row, mm -hmm. count in so many, and you would know right where you were going. Here they just went in and would dig a hole and bury somebody, Nothing and the next time in, they would in, dig another hole and bury somebody. And no it, rhyme or reason. There's no. no well, it's at just the time. It just happened to be a big a empty spot space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So by 1882, every time they would try to dig a a, a, a grave, they would find they run bones, into somebody. and they had had so many cholera epidemics. They were very much afraid that if they opened up the grave of a cholera victim, it oh. might release those germs out yeah. into the I air. I wonder if that really would. I don't know. I two I've people always thought about that. Yeah, I've heard two people that have medical backgrounds. That one said, "Oh no! After all this time, it couldn't possibly do any harm," and another one that said, "Well, maybe yes, maybe it could." So. I don't know. Usually they say, you know, even when they are excavating privies and so forth, they usually say 100 years and then you should be okay. So I don't know. Yeah. And it's been over 100, 100 years. years since anybody's oh, yeah. been buried mm -hmm. in there. And uh, so so probably it's, it's okay. But... Um, okay. Uh, Personally, I don't know if you could give a good date on it. When it was started at that 1787. spot. 
Yeah, yeah. it was a yeah. land grant from the King of Spain to the Roman Catholic citizens of St. Genevieve. Not to the archdiocese, not to the parish, but to the Roman Catholic citizens. But the cemetery was not just the Catholic cemetery. Everybody was buried in there. Mm -hmm. People that were on their way to the gold rush right. and who died on the steamboats going up the river, they were dropped off at the landing with a note saying, right. this is so-and-so, please bury in your cemetery. And they were buried there. Uh -huh. uh, people that, that were, you know, stopping in town, people that Catholics, non-Catholics, uh, French, German. This mm -hmm. is unique that 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 you have an, a, 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 a yeah yes. cemetery that is so universal yet is still belong. It was owned by the Catholic Catholics yes. people. Yes. Yeah. And so when we began this last restoration project, project because they did restorations in 1905. 1924, 1935, again in the 1960s, in the 80s, in the early 90s, the late 90s, and then we had the Save Our American Treasures grant in 2004. And, and uh, it was so unique to try and get all of this organized. In the late 90s, it was, well, who does own the cemetery? Because in order to go get those grants, and fill out the grant papers, who owns the cemetery? So that's when they had to do all this research to find it out. That's why we know it goes all the way back to 1787 mm -hmm. and that it came from the King of Spain. That uh, the when we belong to the, the Catholic people of St. Genevieve. But then the Catholic Church didn't want anything to do with well, it. The city didn't want anything to do no, with when, it. No, when, when we approached all of this, to, to get this organized, they asked the, the diocese and archdiocese, and they said, no, they did not wish to own it. Here it is in St. Genevieve. They didn't want to own it from St. Louis. They asked the parish. The parish didn't want to own it. They weren't burying bodies there any longer. Uh, and we approached the city, and the city didn't want to own it, but the city has been collecting sale, our ta cemetery tax since 1935 on it. Oh, really? So, so they were collecting tax on it even though they didn't own it. Mm -hmm. But they were willing... Well, who was paying the tax? Everybody that lives in the city of St. Oh, Genevieve. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so, and that has kept the cemetery mowed and, and generally taken well, care of. Right so yeah. it's not, it, it, you know, they weren't just getting it uh, for nothing, they were doing something Working, with yeah. it, and it takes care of the new cemetery also, mm -hmm. the new city cemetery mm -hmm. out next to right. to Valley uh -huh. uh, Valley Springs. But um, they took it on, but they didn't want to have to go out and keep getting grants, and they didn't want to have to keep doing the work to keep the restoration going on. So uh, the city now owns it but with the proviso that the foundation for the restoration of St. Genevieve will continue to do the grant applications and do the work okay. and oversee all of the, the restoration work as it's needed to be so done. So ownership so and name great. only, really. I mean, well, you guys have got what to say so more so over it and everything, really. But it still is a city property, yeah. So, and the, and the city is very good to the foundation over it and mm -hmm. and uh, well it, it makes some money it's, it's a prize to have yeah you know beside you know there's it's history yeah, yeah. It's something to be proud of it's something yeah. to be proud of i hope i hope they feel that it's something to oh, be yeah. proud oh, of yes. but it yeah. sure looks a lot different when we first started this <laughs> today from what we started it was a mess it really. was a big mess the fence, yeah. the fence, fence was such a huge yeah, project. Really oh my, was. yes, just the fence alone. Yeah, that that alone was was worth everything. Mm -hmm. uh, much less what we did inside the mm -hmm. fence, but the fence alone. Right. And the wall in the back 
was a mess also. You oh, could poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't even see, see that wall. wall. You couldn't even see the wall. That rock wall. How many of you knew that rock rock wall has been there for about thirty years? And I bet you nobody didn't even, saw even it. see it back there. Across the back. Across, across the, the back. back. What what would have been Sixth, Sixth Street? Street. Mm -hmm. That that rock wall has been there forever. <laughs> Well, but since, since knew the it. 80s, yeah, since, but since the 80s, knew it was there, but it was covered it. with with vines and vegetation and poison ivy and a little bit more poison ivy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> well, that stuff when it gets going, it just crawls everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and that from about 30 foot in front of that wall, you still couldn't see that wall until we really started hacking away at it and and. Uh, and chipping away and and with big saws and and bolt cutter things to get back there and then it was like who knew this wall was here and and then it had not been finished to the extent it is now but once they we got it cleaned up then they went in and finished the wall and uh so that it was completely the whole uh, fence was and that part was done in the 80s in the 80s yeah 1980s yeah 1980s not 1880s 1980s yeah you have yeah. to kind of clarify dates in that's this right time. in, yes. in this time <laughs> sure. you need to do that yeah since the, the cemetery itself goes back to the 1780s yeah, yeah. and uh, so but anyway we hope that everyone will come we hope it is an interesting evening that you're not likely to to uh, duplicate any place else, mm -hmm. and uh, and we hope that it maybe adds a little different touch to your Halloween experience. Uh, though, like I said, we're not doing this as a Halloween project, but. Uh, Come meet some of your ancestors. It's just a nice natural time of the year to have it. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. It smells good in there, and and we uh, have no, fires deep. going in the fire pits, oh, yeah. and the yeah. lanterns shining. It yeah. really looks that makes the cemetery look so pretty. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Thank you. Thank you for all the information. Yeah, that was a nice education. Thank you. Yes. Rather than come to the spirit reunion. Yes. <laughs> Every time you That's the first time we really that. talked about you know, all that stuff. Something learns something new. Yeah. Than yeah. Mm -hmm. Learn something new all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's why we like you guess it like the. We learn so much. <laughs> Talk. Okay, yeah. so if that's it, you want to go what time, the yes. times okay. and all that again? We're going to open at 5 o'clock. Uh, you do not have to start at 5 and stay until 8. You can come as you will and, and go to the cemetery at your own pace. Stay, as long, does it, does stay as long as you like. Some people want to hear all the spirits. Some people just want to hear a few of them. So you can spend as much time as you'd like and, you know, to How stay. long are your presentations about? Oh, well, about three minutes. minutes. Yeah, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes each. At, yeah. At, yeah. Unless people have questions, sometimes yeah. they'll ask, a, you know, a lot oh, of questions okay. and it will last a little longer, but usually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I interrupted your thing, sorry. Well, and, <laughs> and none of our spirits are very shy about no. Expanding on the topics and and everything, but uh, it does it does depend upon the audience. If they ask questions, they're going to answer them, and right. so it will get a little bit longer. And, okay. uh, so from five to eight, five to eight. Anytime you want to come. Anytime you want to come. I wouldn't suggest warm. seven thirty. No, I would say a little bit earlier than that. Dress warm. And, uh, and it's Saturday, October twenty seventh. Ten dollars for adults, five dollars for students. Kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Very interesting. Thank you. We always enjoy coming to do this. I know. You, well, you always 
do a lot of things. You always <laughs> and we always, <laughs> <laughs> she does yeah. we always enjoy you guys coming. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Won't be long and it'll be Christmas. Time. I know. <laughs> it'll be a King's Ball touch. It'll be yes. a King's Ball. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, then we'll be going, okay, we got the holiday, and then yeah. we'll be here rattling off. I know. With no paper. She fascinates me. <laughs> and then we're all, Oh, yeah. She uses no paper. No paper, and... It's all out of her head. Yeah. She knows everywhere everybody is. Yeah. No paper. <coughs> no papers, yep. Yep. She's a very fascinating woman, for sure. Yeah. Okay, now we have Sandra Cabot. Yes. And she's our tourism director in St. John. And she's got some information for you, too. So. Right. So I brought some information about various things coming up this weekend. Um, starting with Friday evening, this is the, uh, the last Fourth Friday Art Walk for the year. They run from February through October. So October 26th will be the final Fourth Friday Art Walk. And... Um, Provided our weather holds out, it should be really nice. Um, we've had nice, bright, sunny days in the 60s, and so um, by the time the art walk starts, which it starts at 6 o'clock on Friday evening, um, we're hoping that um, you know it'll still be pretty nice. And there are a couple of things going on in association with the art walk Friday night. Um, first of all, in the Main Street Park, there's the first annual Pumpkin glow. I don't know. Is it supposed to sit it here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Charlie, whoops, Charlie First. you want to zoom in on this brochure? Don. Oh, Don's down there. Yeah. Don. yeah. Okay. Don, you want to zoom in on this? So the Friends of the Park are sponsoring this. It goes from 6 o'clock till 10 p.m. And you can bring a pumpkin that you've carved and just show it off, or you can bring a a pumpkin and they'll have a carving station there too so it'll be a little bit of an activity kind of a thing and um, children adults whatever it is Main Street Park um, right there by the Beanick Cafe uh, next door to the Inn St. Jem uh, bed and breakfast and then on the other side of the Inn St. Jem um, also on Friday evening is the great pumpkin stroll um, this is basically a trunk or treat event that the hospital is um, sponsoring in the Audubon's parking lot and it goes from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And, um, you know, little ones can wear their costume and uh, do a trunk or treat. So it's a safe environment and a fun environment and sponsored by the St. Genevieve County Memorial Hospital. Well, that's a neat event. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be going on during Art Walk. Um, you know, maybe if you're if the parents are walking around, they can do some things for the for the little ones, and then go and do their thing too. So maybe they have some teenagers who could take over the little ones, and they could go through <laughs> their thing. Yeah. Do what they want to do. <laughs> so um, those are all on uh, Friday evening, and of course, all of the art galleries will be open. Many of the shops in the historic district stay open to kind of support. The art walk and have more things to do when you're walking around. And Sassafras is open also. Sassafras yes. Creek Originals will be open and, and road. yes yes and so I believe that she is also going to be having her spiced cider which she's been having mm -hmm. on Saturdays but I'm sure she'll probably have some there for uh, for the art walk too. So be sure to make the rounds on Friday night. And that's over under the railroad tra mm -hmm. trestle and around the corner. Mm -hmm. Just past and the And down all the ways. Yeah, but it's yeah. a very neat shop. Oh, she is. has oh, original yeah. art in there. She can't miss it. Oh, yes. <laughs> very nice. Very yeah. nice person, too. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. And she, mm -hmm. she does their, her own uh, games and stuff, too. Makes mm -hmm. them herself. Yeah. Very creative lady. Okay, you can go well, back to your yeah. job. So then the next day, of course, is the Rural Heritage Festival. Um, well, starting very early in the morning on Saturday the 27th, it is the four-mile levee loop run slash walk. So um, it's a great opportunity to get out, um, and it's sponsored by the St. Genevieve County Community Center. And... Um, you can sign up at the community center in advance or you could just show up there that morning it starts at 8:30, so show up 
uh, earlier and you can sign up for the walk and um, it'll be out along the levee and back four miles in a loop and get some exercise and get the day started off right. So. How much will it be to? Um, you can call the community center for those details. I don't have their prices necessarily, but it's 883-5244. Do they still do the bird watch? That, yes, so the, the, the bird walk is held during the French Heritage Festival. And oh, that's, that's in Yeah, that's June. in June. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So um, that's also walking on the levee and mm -hmm. writing down what birds you see. Right. So. I just had the wrong time of the year phone. Yeah. Well, you know, you're going to be on the levee on Saturday anyway, so you can definitely, I'm sure there'll be some migratory birds and Christmas probably some e yep. Maybe some egrets. Yeah. Eagles. Eagles. Uh, yes, well, yeah, eagles. I think across the river yes. there's a few yeah. nests. Even there were some, um, I was on the levee a couple of weeks ago with the Fish and Wildlife representative, and there were some brown pelicans migrating. Which, you know, and then there's always ducks and geese and things like that. So, and we are um, in conversations continuing um, to work on the idea of a wildlife refuge out in that area. So, um, to improve the trails and the viewing platforms and um, make some other amenities out there so that people could uh, feel comfortable using the levee more often during the year for exercise and recreation. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have so, benches for them to sit on? Have they what? I said benches for them to sit on to? Yes. Yes. So. Us old, us old folks have to sit nice. down once. Benches, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, that's in the works too. But So well, Saturday great. the 27th, 830 in the morning, the four mile levee loop run. Um, and so Saturday the 27th is the, during the day, the main day for um, the Rural Heritage Festival. And here's the schedule of events for that. Um, hey, Don, this is pretty little. I don't know if you can get it in or not. So this year will be the 10th annual Rural Heritage Festival. Oh, my goodness. Um, started in 2008. And... Um, the St. Genevieve Lions Club are the official sponsors of it, so there are a lot of um, Lions Club members that are very involved in that. Um, primarily, um, Jack Dunsey and um, Clarence Henry are the two main people involved with it, but there are many people that help with it. So um, at the main stage area, uh, down on St. Mary's Road, next to the uh, Bobe Amaro House, um, they start off at 9.30 in the morning with uh, Boy Scouts and the colors and opening ceremonies. And then um, I think Duck Bader is going to be there again this year giving his presentation about the original survey methods that were used way back in the early 1800s in this area. So um, he presents about that information and then on the stage uh, by the Bove Amaro House all during the day. They have different musical groups. Um, Patty Nager will be singing. Dennis Stromat will be playing his fiddle. Um, the Minneth uh, group will be here. The cloggers we all, are going to be there. The cloggers will be clogging. Um, the, and the Amaro House is open too for tours. Yes. Um, the, and then also I wanted to point out that we also have a hammered dulcimer group from uh, Farmington that's going to be coming. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So as Ellie pointed out, uh, at the uh, the lawn, let's say, of the Amaro House, there are many different um, demonstrations going on there. And the Amaro House will be open on Saturday, which it's been closed recently. They haven't had enough uh, staff to keep it open. So it will be open on Saturday. It really will be the last time you'll be able to see that <coughs> this year, excuse me, until it reopens um, in the spring. So um, that's all on St. Mary's Road. And you just mentioned Sassafras Creek Originals. Mm -hmm. So she has several guest um, demonstrators yeah. who will be in front of her shop on that day because it's a perfect you know, this type of an event is perfect for her little shop because she's a lot of early American yeah. um, merchandise mm -hmm. and games, yes. as you said, yeah. and um, crafts and so on. So she'll have several guest people in front of her shop. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then in St. Genevieve, um, there will be, um, first of all, there will be shuttles going from the main um, stage area and the um, Amaro area. There'll be shuttles going from down there up to the historic district um, with the shops and everything, just back and forth all day. They'll circulate around on a pattern. Um, and in the afternoon at the Welcome Center, we have a special guest. This was on the Visit St. Jen um, Facebook page, but we have, you wanna, I brought this so that I can switch them out. So um, we have a guest speaker returning who was here um, a couple of years ago. That just makes it easier to hold. It so, uh, yeah, better than the paper. Right, good idea. Um, so the woman in the red jacket um, holding up this uh, quilt, and I think that's a crazy quilt. Um, not sure, but I think that's a crazy quilt. Um, her name is Ann Hazelwood, and she does a, uh, basically a two-hour workshop called Let's Talk Quilts. And um, if you bring a family heirloom quilt that you've had, uh, that you always have wondered about, or maybe you're wondering how to take care of it, um, you'd like to know something more about the fabrics that are used in it or the pattern that it is, um, she's really <coughs> a vintage quilt expert. When Antiques Roadshow comes to do their show in St. Louis for Missouri and Illinois, she's the person that they call for this area to come in and evaluate all the quilts that are brought oh, in. Okay. So um, she is uh, coming in from uh, one to three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, October 27th. And um, we'll be hosting her at the Welcome Center uh, to um, kind of support the Rural Heritage Day Festival. And she'll be looking at quilts. She's also the author of a series of books about quilts like the books are um, more novels, but they have a theme to them. And so they always have something to do with quilts. And the series that she's working on right now combines wine and quilts. So it's called the Wine Country Quilt Series of books. And she just released her latest book. She'll have that book and her others there. So if you have any of her other books and you'd like to get the author to sign them, she'll do that. You can buy her new book and you can get it signed on Saturday too. So, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's very knowledgeable. And that event, as well as um, the Spirit Reunion yeah, event, as well as the Rural Heritage event, are all um, listed on the Visit St. Jen uh, website, but also our Facebook social media pages. So if you want to share it and invite your friends and say hey meet me bring your quilt we'll go down on saturday um, it's a free program there's no charge um, but share the facebook event and kind of let people know what's happening okay a lot going on here yes yeah. like marianne used to always say you just you can't find something in saint john you're not looking. You're dead. That's right. That's and right. And if you're dead, you can go to the cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, That's and there's the haunted house uh, activities up at the fairgrounds, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Which goes all the way through next week, too. So mm -hmm. I think it really, um, that uh, culminates in Halloween night. They have a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. that. And they also have a um, craft show, which I read about mm -hmm. yes. on the 27th. Mm -hmm. at the youth building up there. At the fairgrounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we had the gentleman so we got that has the, the, the haunted house and stuff here one day, remember? Oh, yeah. <coughs> what now was Keith, his name? Uh, Keith the case. Yeah. Uh -huh. Keith the case. Yeah. And Martha and Kim. Yeah. <laughs> they work very hard up there. You yeah. see them mowing all the time. Wow. They really work hard to keep that all that ground mold. Yeah. I think it's Good. better now than it used to be because oh, they've yeah, done a lot of work for, on, that on that area. Yeah. And yeah. then with the, the um, lawnmower races and all that stuff, they've got more activity at the park, which is really good for the community for yeah. Yeah. food and... At the fairgrounds? At the yes. Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got something going all the time. Yeah. 
Well, it's and like the ladies so. have said, and you've said already. <clears throat> if you can't find something to do in St. Jen, you're dead. Go yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you'd be active there, too, <laughs> because there's <laughs> lots of stuff going on in the cemetery. Yeah. 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 I think uh, we're, we get, get a lot of people from St. Louis. Yes, I've noticed that yeah, fourth Friday mm -hmm. art walks when you talk to people. There's a lot of people lot from of people. St. Louis and Farmington and, um, and even out in Hillsboro, over in Illinois even, mm -hmm. we've had mm -hmm. several people come yeah. up from Cape. Yeah. Well, <coughs> beautiful art too, mm -hmm. isn't there, Iris? You, you know, mm -hmm. you, aren't you, Lots you of one arts. gentleman that yes. you have? Uh, Do I? Is there one gentleman you were going, they're kind of, displaying his uh, work or is it just everybody? Well, Dave uh, Carter, mm -hmm. I think, is at um, the winery. I don't know if it's this month or next month. I didn't bring my list. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he's a phenomenal artist. Mm -hmm. He displays a lot of places, enters a lot, lots of contests. He's from Cape Girardeau, originally from St. Louis. <coughs> But he's a very good. We have really good artists in town. There's been several moved here from St. Louis that are outstanding. Brenda Thompson has moved down to St. Mary's, and her work is at the Lucy Winery. Yeah. And oh, yeah. She, her work is really great. She's painted uh, a lot of Kaskaskia, the, the uh, bell tower, and the church over there. Wow. And her pictures of. Uh, she sits on her porch in St. Mary's and can see across the river, so <laughs> she does a lot of those paintings. Very, very nice. She's great. Yeah. Huh. That's St. A lot of new has a rich history in, mm -hmm. in the art world. Right. I mean, going back a long ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Betty I and do. Betty Garrett and Dolly and... Yeah. I told Martin. a friend of mine the other day Ryan that... Hart. Uh, Charlie this is the most artistic and musical town I've ever come across. Yeah. <laughs> For such saying? a small town, yeah. it's amazing. It is. It is, it is very yeah. much. And it's so yeah, I think we have like 50, 50 something artists now that belong to the art field. Really? Mm -hmm. and they're from Cape and Jefferson County and Farmington and, of course, here. Um, we used to have one from over in Illinois, but she, she's making cake pop cake pops now, so <laughs> she's doing Sounds that kind good. of art. That's and her still outlet. doing mur mur murals oh, yes. in Chester, and they paint churches also, her and her wow. husband, so. Busy ladies. Busy, yeah. 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 She's in a house over in Illinois, too, that a uh, football, a uh, baseball player was from that area, and he retired there, and she painted one whole wall in each of the kids' room. It's just like being in a jungle like oh, <laughs> this oh, one wow. boy's room. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, or floor to ceiling. They're oh, very goodness. good. It is just amazing what she's done. I think they did the Lutheran church here in town and uh, not the Lutheran, the Presbyterian and they did the Catholic church. Repainted it when they were redone. Wow. Oh, my goodness. She's good. Wow. So, anybody got anything else that's going on that we didn't talk about? That's a lot. That's, that's yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the art walk from six to nine, and I think even the Hayloft Gallery above uh, Simple and Sassy, I think there's art up there also this weekend. That'll be good. And yeah. Okay. And Saturday night, the Jonathan Lynn, he's a young man from. Uh, he lives in Sparta. He's originally from Kentucky. Plays 50s and 60s music. He was with a band that was uh, down in uh, Branson. Hello? Hello. I was wondering if the What's New viewers that were unable to attend the candidate forum last Wednesday at the community center, if they would uh, like to watch it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. She 
just to, listening to her. And they would be able to educate themselves on all of the candidates and be sure and vote on November 6th. Very good idea. I thought the interview was very interesting. And if you go to YouTube uh, is, and search for St. Jen, I'm sure it'll show up there. Is that what you do? Yes, yes it will. You do the 2018 St. Jen Candidate Forum from 1017. Okay. Okay, um, maybe Don can put that on the bottom of the screen if he wants to, or if he will. And I think uh, they were interviewed. Uh, Micah has it on his too, doesn't he? So. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Uh, a lot of background noise. You need to tell them to turn their TV off. When yeah, because I think they had us I, on there. I, I think I someone you. was telling her what to say. I think she... Wow. Yes, and I, I could... When you said something about have a good episode, I heard you in the background. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always forget to tell them to turn the radio down. So anyway, that, that was a very interesting performance. Yeah. yeah. They all had their views and presented them very well. That's a good idea. Look it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's in the paper this week, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. The yeah. whole thing is, yeah. So I guess if we don't have anything else to talk about. I think okay. it's okay. Or how are your grandkids with their finger nanny? Are they so I'll doing it? They're getting so big that they're getting too busy. Oh, they're too you busy know, to do it anymore. The, the, oh. the ones that were here, the ones already graduated and is, is in college and, the, and two others are going to graduate this year. And, oh, my word. And I know time flies so fast. And Yeah, they were so little and, and they were they sitting were, there talking and, and just, just fingering it and not even, <laughs> not even right looking at it with their fingers knitting. Yeah, yeah they were, they were finger knitting <laughs> like crazy and, and stuff. And so I figure maybe in about four years when they graduate from college, they'll be ready to start <laughs> doing some other <laughs> things. <laughs> but right now, they're all too busy. Busy, right. Yeah. Well, everybody's life and the, is busy. the next now. little bit of them are boys, and, and they like the finished product. They just don't like too much doing it. Very, right. Though they will sit, sit down sometimes and, and knit with me. And uh, well, that's a good it thing. A try. To, yeah. 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 Or tat. They like to tat a little bit. Oh, you know how to tat. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. There was a nun that was always going to teach us how to tat. She yeah. made the most beautiful baptism on booties and dresses. Oh. And little oh, outfits. Yeah. When we were freshmen or sophomore in high school. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And she never did do it. She always oh, said yeah. she would and never did. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I started tatting about 10 years ago. Did you really? Yeah. So you had to get the class. I made... No, I learned standing on a street corner in about five minutes. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll come stand on the street corner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, I was, we just got back from Seattle and I was up at Pike's Market and, and I was buying yarn in the marketplace and, and the guy that was selling it, he asked what I, what I did with the yarn and I said I was a knitter. And as we were finishing up, I said, and I tat. And he said, you tat? He said, I want to learn how to tat so bad. He said, but I didn't know anybody to teach me. I said, well, I learned in five minutes. And so I got my tatting out of my bag. And we stood in the middle of Pike's Market, and I taught him how to tat. And, so, and he's a famous uh, tatter now. Well, we'll have to see about that. Next time I go back, I'll have to find him and, and see if he's done anything with it. But... Uh, Okay, so all the information we gave you tonight is on Visit St. Jen, most of it. Yes, it is. So if you want to look up times, dates, places, Visit oh. St. Jen. And if you want to buy tickets in advance, they can be purchased for the Spirit Reunion. They can be purchased at the Welcome Center, or you oh. can buy them online by, uh, by telephoning the uh, foundation or by calling... Uh, 
314-607-6149, and you can purchase your tickets in advance. So you don't have to wait in line? You don't have to wait in line. You right. can go right in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, you have a booth up at the cemetery where you buy Yeah, we have a table. Oh, okay. table that you can buy them, but, but you can get them in advance. We've already sold advance tickets. And oh, okay. So And you have no limit on them? No, I don't think we have a... They haven't given us a limit as to how many people okay. we could put in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> After we all those 3,000 or 5,000. 5,000, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so we, I think we're in okay shape with okay. everybody show up. And, uh, well, we enjoy it. having guests that are talkative. Yes. So. You have something you different all the time, Dad. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I, every, every show has unique people oh yes. are not unique people well i guess they are unique yes. with yeah. big mouths <laughs> <laughs> well when you have a lot of info you can't help but that yeah it's the way it is yeah yeah so if you want to say good night to everyone well, good, night, good, night. Everybody. good night everyone good night. thanks good night. for watching us thank you thank we'll you. be back in two thanks weeks thanks for having us you are welcome thank Very you for much. coming come back all of time. you oh, okay <laughs> Yeah, you just do. give us a call and we'll do Tell it. Tell us what, okay. you, what you want to do. Yeah.